In the book, I have a little notice quote from Al Gore at a Bill Gates event uh, talking about how Africa is projected to have the hugest population explosion in the, in the 21st century. And you know what Al Gore's solution is? Quote, ubiquitous fertility management because there's going to be too many people of color in the world. Now, the quote was ubiquitous fertility management. But we have a white, wealthy Western politician lamenting that there's going to be too many Africans. And the solution is to get rid of them with ubiquitous uh, fertility management, unquote. This is their agenda. And this is not, you know, how does Al Gore get away with that? Can you imagine Al, uh, Donald Trump? The media letting him get away with saying there's going to be too many black people, too many Africans. We've got to limit their population in order to save the earth. This is their agenda. The left always bill themselves as the saviors. And if you study their antecedents, their fount, their progeneration their origination, their proto-primeval development, they come out of the Jacobins in France. And if you go read mainline history books, they were devil worshipers that wanted a nine-day work week, total enslavement, to have sex with children, basically Hollywood. And... It's great to have Lord Monkton on because he's a big historian. He knows all about this, and, and he'll, he'll get into all of it. But that's where it goes. So you wonder, it's just about maximum power for elites. So you have free market capitalism. You have crony globalist capitalism. It's against that. You have the Democrats that have 70-plus percent of the wealth in Congress, but they're always trying to create this culture war and want to transfer wealth. What they want is a tax on everything you do and the surveillance of that to track and control it and then exempt themselves, like China and India are exempt, we're not. So Trump says, that's a screw job, I'm not doing that. And Mark Moreno, who was hugely critical of Republicans, says, wow, that's really great. That alone puts Trump up there in lights. So going back to Mark Moreno, the left always bills themselves as the saviors. But if you look at the countries everybody's trying to get into, it's the places that at least have quasi-free market. And they're not one level above them, they're, 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 it's a whole other universe of better. And Bernie Sanders is like, I don't like the fact you can get a thousand different doctors of 30 types of deodorant. It's confusing. My honeymoon was in the Soviet Union. That's a real quote. And you're like, wow. And he tells a bunch of idiot college students who have all these choices that the West is bad as they try to wreck it as quickly as possible. So that's their plan to have a managed economy. As you mentioned in your book, you have the documents. They admit this all. The politically incorrect guide to climate change. I want to talk some about that. So looking at them. They build themselves as a savior of the earth, but it's really a eugenics-based, transhumanist, post-industrial world model of feudalism, in their own words. And so, really, those of us fighting them are not trying to be saviors of the earth. We're just trying to not live in a giant, high-tech gulag. So, can, can you get into their ideology and get into how we're going to stop a Mark Moreno? Well, as the uh, Greenpeace co-founder Patrick Moore says, who's turned against Greenpeace, it is the most anti-human ideology today, the climate agenda, modern environmental movement. In the book, I have a little notice quote from Al Gore at a Bill Gates event uh, talking about how Africa is projected to have the hugest population explosion in the, in the 21st century. And you know what Al Gore's solution is? Quote, ubiquitous fertility management because there's going to be too many people of color in the world. Now, the quote was ubiquitous fertility management. But we have a white, wealthy Western politician lamenting that there's going to be too many Africans. And the solution is to get rid of them with ubiquitous uh, fertility management, unquote. This is their agenda. And this is not, you know, how does Al Gore get away with that? Can you imagine Al, uh, Donald Trump? The media letting him get away with saying there's going to be too many black people, too many Africans. We've got to limit their population in order to save the earth. This is their agenda. Their agenda goes, we have we document in the book how even in Africa where they have no running water, no electricity, they, they use the rivers for sewers. They burn dung and, uh, and, and, and wood in their, in their huts and they're breathing in horrible pollution. They're being denied modern cheap fossil fuel energy because the earth can't handle it. They're not allowed to make the West's mistake, the wealthy country's mistakes. 
This is immoral. I, I interviewed uh, Governor of California, Jerry Brown, saying the developing world in Africa and South America can't emulate the United States United States capitalism and prosperity. Because well, yeah, Obama told emulate. Africa you can't have air conditioning or cars. That's right. Unless unless it's done. By the way, by the by, essentially white wealthy Westerners managing it, and Obama's administration was very detrimental to Africa. Prevented many coal plants from going online. I document that in the book as well. Oh yeah, the answer this to Africa's uh, population explosion, because it is overpopulated in some areas, is we know one thousand percent from Japan to Italy to everywhere. You industrialize population growth drops to one point three, one point four. We would have a African population decline instead of a giant Islamic bloom and invasion. And I'm all for there being more Africans. Just don't be foaming at the mouth Africans with, with knives in your teeth coming across on Soros boats to slit our throats. Well, what's happening in Africa is you're exactly right with the development part. They, when they get development, their population would stabilize and ultimately decline. And the only reason some European countries are, is all the influx of immigration. But it is amazing what development and prosperity does to human beings it cleans up the environment that's the perverse thing fossil fuels actually clean up exactly. it cleans up your rivers it cleans up your air they don't mention that the other thing they do they make all these scary predictions to bring everyone in you and i document how paul ehrlich the 1960s overpopulation he was compared to quote just like hitler by contemporaries in the 1960s he wanted to put uh sterilization agents in the water sure, that's what i'm getting water. at is that the left goes and weaponizes Africa and makes them hate the West. Then Soros opens it up, lets Islam and with Obama grow and take over Africa, and then use the giant blooming population to then come in to, quote, conquer Europe in a race-based system instead of everybody just working together. This is the most diabolical evil, and really that's what it is. Bill Gates, Al Gore, the globalists are... You know, the Democrats are the maddest they've been at Trump right now since slavery ended. I mean, I mean, I mean that's really true. They're the ones. And... It's true. They're, they're just race-based because they're cold-blooded. And how do we get the average leftist to understand how they've been conned? Well, that's part of the thing. Now, what, did I, what I try to do in the book is I feature left-wing scientists, scientists who are committed environmentalists. I feature scientists who voted for Al Gore, think he's a smart man, would vote for Al Gore for president again, but they're appalled at his science presentation. They're appalled to what they see as global warming hijacking real environmental issues like clean air, clean water, uh, cleaning up areas. They think that global warming is one of the most anti-environmental issues. And I try to profile these pro politically left-wing scientists in order to make it okay for other left-wing activists to realize the error of their ways. I feature United Nations scientists who turned against the UN and openly admit and this is one of the funny things in the book, Alex, they actually behind the scenes in the UN talk about, we'll make the next report so alarming, the world will have to act. They talk about how they have to get rid of the medieval warm period because they, if, it, if we have one, if they acknowledge it, then they can't explain current warmth because we had a medieval warm period uh, you know, 800 years ago, simply because we didn't, and we, we had a medieval warm period without benefit of coal plants and SUVs. So they, they talk openly about altering the data. I go through all of this in the book. So even left-wing activists, the hope is not that they're going to change their ways, but that they'll abandon the climate movement as they abandon the overpopulation movement, the global cooling movement, the Amazon deforestation movement, the resource scarcity movement. All the previous environmental scares have eventually been abandoned because they were scientifically untenable, and we're reaching that tipping point with global warming. Well, Mark Moreno... We know the collectivists want to manage and control humanity. It's, it's, it's what they crave. Free market libertarians, we just crave turning humanity loose. Uh, and and history is replete. I mean, as you know, in Venezuela, they long ago ate their dogs and cats. Now it's cannibalism, and the government won't let you say thousands die a week from starvation. I just look at the average college students, and I'm not trying to be mean. They look like they've been beat upside the head with a lobotomy scalpel, and I just don't know what we're going to do because... Uh, there's the, something about dumb people. They hate civilization. They hate electricity. They hate the light. They hate. They see it as like a threat. So they try to pull it down and then starve to death. And they're so dumb they don't know why they starve to death. Yeah, and we have a. I mean, we have a collegiate uh, organization called Collegiates for Constructive Tomorrow, and we've noticed just in the last five years, college kids coming up 
have been so indoctrinated in this agenda of the climate change and environmental that they are now you know different from college kids five years ago. I mean, it's working from kindergarten through college when you start this indoctrination. And I feature Leonardo DiCaprio in the book saying, you gotta get kids young. And, and Al Gore's producer, Lori David, we want you to grow up to be activists. They're succeeding, Alex, and we're losing this whole generation. As witnesses- That's right, well, that's what Islam says. You gotta get the kids young. Uh, all right, and Sadiq Khan doesn't want to stop general mutilation. In fact, you get banned off Twitter if you criticize it. It's a sacrament of the left. Thank you, Mark Moreno. Thank you so much. We'll be back, folks. Stay with us. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. He goes to jail. He goes to jail. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea, a new world order, a world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the beginning, order. The beginning of a new international order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. I think it's past will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity and it isn't just a crisis. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. We are now facing a common challenge. And the challenge is how to build a world order for the first time in history on a global basis. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the US would participate fully We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities and there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. And I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. 2009 is also the first year 
global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. New World Order is the headline in the Globe and Mail in Canada. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Of course we are. We are absolutely slaves to central banks. <laughs> InfoWars Life Brain Force Plus is our number one selling product by leaps and bounds, and for a good reason. Going back about five years ago, we did research on what top selling nootropics were, what were most popular, what were best, what people liked, and we made it even stronger. Then we cut the price because leading competitors have five to seven times markup. We only have 150% then it helps fund our operation. Well, now it's 50% off. That means we've got a 25% markup and we've got it paired with the real red pill that takes about seven days to kick in. Brain force takes about 30 minutes, but the two go together. It's the mind and body challenge. They're both 50% off individually or together they're 50% off and free shipping with the combo at InfoWarsLife.com. But it's got to end in a couple days because both of these bestsellers are about to sell out. InfoWarsLife.com to get your Brain Force Plus and Real Red Pill today.